knew that Louis E. Kurds, a World War II ace pilot from the United States, shot down an Allied plane that carried his future wife on purpose? Well, to know his whole story, stick with us till the end. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video discusses Louis Edward Kurds, one of four American pilots who accomplished the remarkable achievement of downing one airplane from each of the three Axis powers. Lieutenant Colonel Louis Edward Kurds, an ace pilot for the Allies, was interviewed by historian Douglas E. Clannon in 1991 about his experience in the Second World War. He began by calculating his upbringing in Fort Wayne, Indiana. It was the setting where he developed his aspirations to join the Army and become a pilot. Kurds was born and raised in Fort Wayne, according to the Indiana Historical Society and Indianapolis Records. After marrying his father, a real estate agent, his mother, a former school teacher, started caring for the family. Kurds attended Northside High School and Forest Park School for his primary education. As a teenager, he assisted his father with laborious tasks like weeding and building. Kurds' father was an avid aircraft enthusiast. It was understandable why he became interested in aircraft. My father enjoyed flying. He also assisted Art Smith in getting his airplane airborne at our neighborhood Memorial Park. He then drove me to Smith Field. I also received a ride during World War I between eight and nine years old. I was also taken to the Cleveland Air Races by my father. He said he had a lot of exposure to aircraft as a young child. Kurds had such a strong sense of duty to his nation that when the United States joined the Second World War, he felt compelled to enlist. Kurds referred to himself as patriotic, but he was upfront when he admitted he didn't know why he wanted to enlist. He only knew that he was intended to fly. I genuinely have no idea why. I desired to soar. However, I wonder if anyone truly understands their motivation for enlisting. They may all look back and acknowledge their patriotism. Mussolini and Hitler didn't appeal to me. However, I was unaware that Pearl Harbor was approaching. Sincerely, I doubt I could explain why. Kurds became a flying cadet after passing the test and then an aviation cadet. By 1942, he had been transported for training to Santa Ana, California. Kurds received his commission and completed his flight school in December 1942. Through World War Wings, a Lockheed P-38 Lightning similar to the one flown by Kurds during World War II. Kurds was initially given command of a Lockheed P-38 Lightning when he arrived in North Africa. With a top speed of 413 miles per hour, the P-38 was the best long-range fighter in American history. This speed was much faster than comparable Axis aircraft like the Japanese Mitsubishi A6M Ryzen and the German Messerschmitt Bf 109. On April 29, 1943, Kurds, at only 22 years old, climbed into the P-38's cockpit for a routine mission. Kurds came seeing numerous German Luftwaffe Bf 109s flying over Tunisia. In the subsequent battle, he destroyed three and injured a fourth. Kurds became an American ace less than a month later. On May 19th, when he shot down two additional 109s in addition to his earlier triumphs. On June 24th, Kurds contacted the Regia Aeronautica of Italy when conducting an escort mission for American bombers over Sardinia. By taking down an Italian Maquis C202 Fulgore, he defeated both Germany and Italy. On August 27, 1943, Kurds learned via the radio that one of his teammates was in danger while on another escort assignment. He made adjustments to his aircraft to help the wingman who was being attacked by several German Bf 109s. In a dogfight that lasted less than an hour, Kurds successfully shot down two planes. His ship, however, was harmed and lacked enough fuel to return to North Africa without incident. Due to this, he was forced to land on a beach south of Salerno. He never returned to base, therefore the military declared him missing in action. According to Kurds, the Italians refused to deliver him to a German soldier who wanted to seize him. He was instead given a tiny beach cottage. Together with the other four Americans, he attempted to flee, but they were quickly taken back in. They were moved to San Valentino's mountaintop after being wrapped in blankets. Nineteen of them managed to escape after spending a month in jail. Kurds was unfortunately shot down by the Nazis on August 27, 1943, and captured by the Italians. The Italians gave themselves over to the Allies a short while afterward. Germany invaded its former ally in retaliation to the Italian armistice. Before the Germans took over the POW camp, Kurds and a few other pilots escaped. On May 24, 1944, they arrived on Allied soil. Kurds was sent back to his hometown of Fort Wayne, Illinois in the United States. In August 1944, he asked to return to active service and join the 3rd Air Commando and the 4th Fighter Squadron in the Pacific, flying the P-51 Mustang. Kurds was deployed to the Philippines, where he faced off against skilled Japanese aviators. Near the island of Formosa, he rapidly shot down a Japanese reconnaissance plane. 
Along with supporting ground troops, he was tasked with hitting Japanese bases. Along with escorting Allied ships, dropping supplies from the air, delivering mail, and evacuating the wounded, they also raided Japanese installations on the island of Taiwan and along the coast of China. Kurds finished his to-do list during the conflict by bringing down Japanese, Italian, and German aircraft. But it didn't stop there, as he shot down a plane that wasn't an enemy aircraft. On February 10th, Kurds was cruising over the Philippine Sea, watching a U.S. pilot who had been forced to ditch his aircraft. He abruptly caught sight of a plane flying towards the Batten Islands. Kurds couldn't have known the plane had been grounded due to a storm, low on gasoline and lost the pilot. He was only trying to find any ground to land his plane. Kurds had to determine whether the aircraft was an American aircraft without knowing any of this, or it's the Japanese pretending to be Americans. The American pilot wasn't reachable on the radio. How was he going to grab the crew on the plane's attention? He dove in front of the C-47 before firing a volley of machine gun fire in its direction. Finally, he carefully and deliberately shot out both of the C-47's engines to stop it from landing. The American aircraft was finally compelled to make an underwater emergency landing. Everyone on board made it out alive and onto life rafts. The passengers could already board a life raft before the plane went down. For as long as he could, Kurds was encircling the group from above, guarding them. Kurds returned to the closest base as his plane's fuel slowly ran out. The following day, Kurds returned and led a rescue plane to save the crew and passengers. One of the passengers was surprisingly a well-known individual to Kurds. He had previously dated the Russian nurse, and it seemed that fate had brought them back together because he married her in 1946. Kurds received the Distinguished Service Cross for his courageous actions and substantial service during the Second World War. That was the incredible story of Lieutenant Lewis E. Kurds. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any topic suggestions we should do next, please let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.